I'm Madeline Quinn. I play Noel. I'm Dasha Negrasova. I play the girl and I'm the director of the film. I'm Betsy Brown and I play Abby. And the film is The Scary of 61st. Hello, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is John Borbobak, and this time we are discussing the film The Scary of 61st with filmmakers Tasha Nekrasova, Madeline Quinn, and Betsy Brown. Hello, welcome to the Teddy TV. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Hi. Hi. Nice Hello. to be here. Yeah, so how did you come to this idea? That's, I think, the first thing uh, we should discuss. Um, well, Maddie and I wrote the script together and we were just really obsessed with the, the Epstein saga. We live in New York, obviously, and when he died, it just felt like a really significant event. A big slap in the face. Yeah. And so we started writing the script in September mm -hmm. um, at this gym that we're members of called Equinox that had a really nice rooftop deck. <laughs> and yeah, we... It, it, start, it began as a short and then mm -hmm. sort of organically uh, ran its way into a feature, but um, because it just started getting too long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, even though the driving force of, of the narrative is all the different uh, conspiracy theories around um, the Jeffrey Epstein case. For me, it kind of functioned as a big middle finger to this whole capitalist elite uh, that seems untouchable and seems to get away with everything. To what extent uh, could we understand the film in this way? Yeah, I think that's accurate. I mean, my character says, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. The only conspiracy is the one between the elites who depend on a permanent underclass for them to exploit. And that was very much sort of a, a thesis of the film and kind of what motivated us to make it was that we felt kind of powerless and like there was a, a futility and even trying to figure out what happened to Jeffrey Epstein because there are people in power who don't want us to know. Yeah, absolutely. The film works with kind of an amalgam of different genres and different um, inspirations from Jallo to the psychological horror thriller films of Polanski, which considering the topic of the film is particularly funny in a way. Um, can you tell us a bit about how did you glued all of this together? Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, a psychological horror film made sense because the Epstein stuff is so horrifying. <laughs> um, and I think that the references just kind of came together pretty organically, just sort of instinctually. I mean, Eyes Wide Shut is also obviously a big reference and that was always that was always kind of like the punchline of the film even when it was a short mm -hmm. um so that was kind of the bedrock and then everything else just sort of came about through the process of, of filmmaking yeah that was the touchstone and there's like the subconscious underlying influence of things like demon lover and some of these jollo films that you're talking about um yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like to turn to Betsy. Um, I think uh, your character goes through probably like the story arc that's maybe the most challenging out of the three to portray, even though I think all three of them are uh, very complex and have their own challenges. How did you approach uh, portraying this character in the film? Um, I think that, well, first of all, I was only able to do the work that I did because of the environment in which Dasha and Maddie created, um, which was an extremely uh, supportive and free 
space to play. And I feel like, uh, basically I kind of disassociated when doing those scenes. Um, I barely, like when I watched the movie, I barely like remember what I even did. Um, I think I just allowed myself to go to a completely guttural, instinctual kind of in, infant state. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it was really on point and I actually, and this is actually leads to my next question. The film was like morbidly funny um, which was which was really interesting to experience because obviously the, the subject topic is not that funny. But then yeah. at the same time, when I was watching the movie, like you just can't stop like getting in and out of this like um, of this like humorous state somehow. Um, was this a deliberate aim, or was this something that really like just grew out of the process? It absolutely is just natural i think the only thing you have really is humor like when you are powerless uh that's kind of what i've my entire life relied on as a like way to uh dissociate from traumatic things i guess so gallows humor black humor whatever you want to call it is uh yeah yeah it was it's imperative and I think it gives the film an element. Like I think the campiness of the of the movie also shouldn't be overlooked, and that is kind of what makes it so funny. Yeah, right. And I mean, it also makes it like very accessible in a way. So, yeah, that was that was an um, an interesting dynamic in in the movie. Um, female friendship and female sexuality is also central to the film. How did you approach this theme and in what way uh, works um, this as like a catalyst and as a driving force of the narrative? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, for Betsy's character um, that she portrayed excellently, I really wanted to sort of depict female sexuality as kind of like unmanageable and grotesque because of the context in which it's been like transgressed upon by Epstein and his associates. So it was about, um, yeah, about making it almost like a rebellious gesture for me. Um, and with our two characters, the sexuality really is just sort of grounded in kind of like the bond that the characters form because they are so um, disempowered, ultimately. Right. At the same time, the friendship between Eddie and Noel, it also seemed like slightly problematic. There is like a lot of codependency, like certain level of manipulation between between the two of them. Uh, can you talk a bit about this dynamic and this power relationship between the two friends? Um, defer to you. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, I wanted to tell a story about these two girls. I guess I'm a big fan of like just the two characters and then a third being introduced that like disrupts their their dynamics so they had to be kind of codependent in a way and we um i wanted betsy's character addy yeah to part of the reason why her possession or whatever you want to call it does get so extreme is because she does become isolated once my character is introduced she's sort of like pushed out of the the her, her friendship with noelle and her boyfriend is also really um quite shitty <laughs> so it's like yeah that those dynamics had to be there for for Addie's isolation to really land mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Um, yeah please one th when watching the movie I felt I I think I didn't even know how iced out I was being on set 
like the character of Addie was supposed to be on set. And then watching the movie, I was like, damn, like these girls are so accurately mean to this character. And it Mm -hmm. felt, it felt like very true to how some female friendship dynamics work when a third comes in a more interesting, maybe more powerful third comes in to play. So I really appreciated that. Right. Um, what I also found a bit interesting is that with the girl and uh, Noel, um, when this romance uh, starts to um, spring, spring to life, um, it was almost as if this whole erotic tension was derived from getting deeper and deeper into these conspiracy theories. Um, can you tell us a bit about, about this aspect of the film? Yeah, well, my character is sort of, you know, she's like an Epstein truther. She's been on the trail for a while, and I think she's very lonely. Um, And so when she feels seen and sort of understood by Noelle, that does become very erotic because of how close they they get. But then, um, I guess without giving away spoilers, it also kind of makes the eventual betrayal, the end of the film, um, land better because then she really, my character really is like alone, you know? Right. Um, so horror seems a very fitting (laughs) genre to tell this story. Um, was, is there any way to tell a similar story than, than a horror movie? I don't know. Yeah, horror seems appropriate. You know, I mean, there's a big tradition here in America with shows like Law and Order, SVU, kind of like ripped from the headlines, sex crime depiction. I guess like a melodrama could also be a a procedural kind of melodrama could be an interesting genre to tell it. But horror just felt... um, felt right because it seemed all of the Epstein stuff was so evil that it like basically felt satanic. Right. All right. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today and talking about the movie. Um, Let's hope that in June we can see it in the cinemas all together. That would be definitely lovely. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks for having us.